Hello viewers, welcome back to Drawing Stuff with Paul Yeisman. Today I draw a Canon SLR camera lens using a mix of graphite, fine liner and Copic markers and also investigate different camera angles. I started this video as a test as I worked out how to best position my Canon AOS 700D for overhead filming. I wound up placing a cutting mat on my desk to try and align the camera better. I then decided to see if I could complement this with a side on camera view. For that I used my Logitech C922 and set it up on the right. I also permanently set up my lighting by clearing some junk out of my desk and positioning my lights. Later I moved to a webcam on the left hand side as that was better than the right as what I was drawing was not occluded by my hand. So you can see my setup here now. You'll notice my lights have paper over the top to act as diffusers. The lighting setup actually works quite well and will save me buying a fancy pants lighting system until later. Here I see if my right hand oblique angle is any good and then I'll use the studio mode in OBS to transition to the above view. The inset shows my new lens. This comes from my first SLR I bought which has been in storage ever since the mirror stopped working and I attempted to fix things and things went wrong. I think this lens is an improvement on the one I was using for my overhead videos, so, so now it is my go-to for this purpose. The lower right inset shows the camera lens I am drawing. This started as a test for the angles and I decided to take it all the way rather than stop with a quick and nasty sketch. Rather than draw the lens as I did here, I should have sketched out a rhombus for it to give me the correct length and perspective. That would have saved me time with some post-production in Photoshop. I skip to about 6 minutes to see the final piece. And though I am drawing in the white elements of the lens in grey, I'll go over them with white later. And if those birds would shut up, I'd be really appreciative. After moving to the right hand side oblique camera angle, I decided that will drive you the viewer nuts, as it drives me nuts. So I rearranged things to film from a left hand angle. This involved a lot of adjustment and a couple of different mount points where I tested things until I settled on this one which we'll see once the camera stops shaking around like nut jobs. That's uh, the best oblique angle that's not too sort of side on or top viewing from where the uh, positioning is. What do you think of the side on? Does it work? When an editor cuts away to a side on view when they're interviewing a person speaking that really gives me the shits. Uh, but I think it's okay here as there is no eye line to break. I recently bought some blending sticks and you just saw me use them and they actually work quite nice. So why I haven't used them in the past 20 years? Who knows? With my 01 fine liner I add some definition to my sketch and by now once we go to the overhead view, you'll really see how wacky the perspective is. Uh, the lens also appears a little square compared to its real life counterpart. It is at this stage that I decide I'll do some photoshopping of the final sketch to correct both of these. And I'll show that at the end of the video. As I've recently introduced chapters, you could always skip ahead to around 6 minutes 20. To show you what I think was wrong with the perspective, I'll draw a little rectangle on the pad shortly. To show you what I think is wrong with the perspective, I draw this on the pad showing what it should be in black and what it actually is in red. So the shape of the red rhombus could have been used as a framing device right at the start of the still life, so that would save time. Uh, withdrawing as I would not need to do any post-processing. So next up I will shift to the colouring in and I decided to colour with grey only and use my white gel pen for the highlights and detail. With the N4 I was working on a more obvious top-down lighting scheme as in reality the only highlights on the mostly black object where a couple of lines are wrong along the horizontal plane of the lens. The 
Next, I use my N6 to add in deeper shadows and detail. I then decide that the sketch needs to be darker and add a wash of warm grey 5. Rather than darken the image, I think it washed everything out, and that's something to keep in mind for future drawings. Those are rubber hole markers, they do a little bit of blending, and sometimes one colour over the top of other can totally overwhelm or change the feel of the underlying colours. What I think the warm uh, grey did. And that's much the same way that the uh, colourless blender works. As in, it spreads out the ink, sometimes it can wash it out, sometimes it can change colour. That pretty much finishes off the shading and I move on to the light details and highlights with my white gel pen. And these pens, I have a love and hate relationship. Mine tend to be pretty sporadic in the ink that gets applied, either all or none. Good for sketchy looking work, but not much chop if I wanted to use them for fine details. So in this situation, it works. Finally, I add some finishing touches with thicker fine liner and call it a day. Okie dokie, here's a finished piece as drawn. I think the minimalistic colouring works okay as, as with the gel pen. As I was unhappy with the lens length and perspective, I spent about five minutes faffing around in Photoshop to produce the bottom image, which is elongated and partially perspective corrected. Uh, video wise, are you a fan of different angles? Does it add interest or should I stick to just the one? Anywho, if you have found this interesting, informative, entertaining, etc., subscribe, like, and share. Build up my subscriber base for a measly four after a month. Until next time, you have been watching Drawing Stuff with me, Paul Yeaman. Ciao!